2025 Hyundai Santa Fe, redefining midsize SUV excellence with a sophisticated redesign. The highly popular Hyundai Santa Fe has entered its fifth generation, and unlike its predecessors, the carmaker has completely revamped the design. The new Santa Fe bears no resemblance to earlier models, featuring a redesigned interior and a new 1.6-liter hybrid engine. When Hyundai unveiled the new Santa Fe in July last year, its bold exterior design sparked intense debate among car enthusiasts. Opinions are divided, but one thing became clear during its recent launch in Australia. The new Santa Fe is an outstanding SUV. The 2025 Santa Fe has been introduced to the Australian market with three trim levels, all featuring the same hybrid setup. This system combines a 1.6-liter turbocharged petrol engine with an electric motor integrated into the gearbox and a small 1.49 kWh lithium-ion polymer battery pack. The petrol engine delivers 172 kilowatts, 231 horsepower, at 5,600 RPM and 367 Newton meters, 271 lbfd, of torque between 1,000 and 4,100 RPM, while the electric motor adds 44.2 kilowatts, 59 horsepower, and 264 Newton meters, 195 lbfd, at 1,700 RPM. Currently, this hybrid setup is the only powertrain available at launch. However, Hyundai plans to introduce a 2.5-liter turbocharged petrol engine in the fourth quarter. This engine will produce 206 kilowatts, 276 horsepower, and 422 newton meters, 311 lbfd of torque, paired with an 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Unfortunately, the 2.2-liter CRD diesel engine from the previous Santa Fe, still available in the facelift Kia Sorento, has been discontinued due to low sales. Hyundai also mentioned that towing is not a priority for Santa Fe buyers, who typically do not require the higher towing capacity that a diesel engine provides. Hyundai anticipates that 60% of the 2025 Santa Fe sales will be for the hybrid electric vehicle, HEV with the remaining 40% for the 2.5-liter model. The new Santa Fe is larger than its predecessor, measuring 4,830 mm, 190.1 inches, in length, 1,900 mm, 74.8 inches, in width, and 1,720 mm, 67.7 inches, in height, with a 2,815 mm, 110.8 inches, wheelbase. This makes it 45 mm, 1.7 inches, longer, 60 mm, 2.3 inches, taller, and gives it a 50 mm, 1.9 inch, longer wheelbase than the old model. The new Santa Fe's size is even more noticeable in person, thanks to its boxier and more upright design. Australian buyers can choose from 10 colors for the new Santa Fe, including creamy white matte and earthy brass matte. The lineup starts with the standard Santa Fe, available in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Above it is the Elite, offered exclusively in all-wheel drive, while the top-tier calligraphy comes in six or seven-seat configurations. Hyundai Australia expects approximately 50% of buyers to opt for the calligraphy, with the Elite and base models each accounting for about 25% of sales. Prices begin at $55,500 Australian dollars, $36,900 for the base front-wheel drive model and rise to $58,500 Australian dollars, $38,900 for the all-wheel drive version. The Elite starts at $65,000 Australian dollars, $43,300 and the calligraphy is priced up to $75,000 Australian dollars, $49,900 A significantly enhanced interior the interior of the new Santa Fe is a complete departure from the previous model. While the fourth-generation interior was well-received, the new model's interior feels considerably more spacious and luxurious. Stepping inside the new Santa Fe, the Range Rover-inspired steering wheel immediately stands out. This steering wheel, similar to the one in the Hyundai Granger in Korea, complements the robust nature of the new model. In front of the wheel, you'll find dual 12.3-inch screens integrated into a single panoramic curve display. Standard features include wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Over-the-air updates are available for various systems, including safety, braking, performance, and driver assistance functions, eliminating the need for dealership visits. At the SUV's launch, 
We explored both the base model and the flagship calligraphy, and we were thoroughly impressed with both. The base model, starting at a competitive 55,500 Australian dollars, dollar 36, 900, is well equipped, featuring the same screens as the flagship model, including a dedicated climate control display and a wireless smartphone charging pad. A significant change in the fifth generation Santa Fe is the relocation of the gear selector from the tunnel to the steering column, adopting a shift by wire system. This change allows for a new storage tray where the old shifter was and provides a large storage cubby beneath the tunnel, a feature more commonly seen in EVs. The seats in the standard model are upholstered in a soft, comfortable fabric. The Santa Fe Calligraphy's cabin feels even more luxurious. It approaches the premium feel of the Genesis GV80, which we drove recently, an impressive feat given that it costs roughly 60,000 Australian dollars, dollar 40, 000, less. The calligraphy trim of the Santa Fe is adorned with beautiful, soft leather on the steering wheel, dashboard, door panels, center console, and seats, available in several colors. It also features a configurable ambient lighting system and a clever storage cubby at the top of the dash, which uses UVC light to sterilize items like phones, wallets, and glasses. Both the Elite and Calligraphy trims include twin wireless smartphone chargers, a heated steering wheel, and heated and ventilated front seats. Hyundai has equipped the Elite and Calligraphy models with a 12-speaker Bose audio system that delivers fantastic sound quality. Additionally, the calligraphy includes a digital rearview mirror and 14-way adjustable drivers and 8-way adjustable passenger seats. The second row is extremely spacious, especially with the available captain's chairs, providing ample legroom, tow room, and headroom. However, the absence of a dedicated climate control unit for the second row is peculiar. Instead, the driver must use the front screen to adjust the A, C, and heating settings for the second row. The third row is surprisingly spacious, thanks to the tall roof line, and can comfortably accommodate adults. Cargo space has increased in the new Santa Fe. With the rear seats up, it offers 628 liters, 22.1 cubic feet, of cargo capacity, which expands to 1,949 liters, 68.8 cubic feet, with the rear seats folded down. We spent most of the first day driving the entry-level model of the 2025 Santa Fe. Priced at 55,500 Australian dollars, dollar 36, 900, it is 7,500 Australian dollars, dollar 5, 000, 000, more than the base Santa Fe we reviewed three years ago. While this is a significant increase, the new Santa Fe feels substantially more premium and offers a much improved driving experience. To start, the interior of the new Santa Fe is vastly improved with almost none of the scratchy black plastic found in the old model. It feels like a monumental leap forward, not just a step. The cabin features plenty of soft leather and abundant storage, and the two screens are user-friendly with crystal-clear graphics. The increased space in the new Santa Fe is also immediately noticeable. Hyundai's decision to equip the new Santa Fe with a standard hybrid powertrain has sparked some debate, but it quickly won us over. The system intelligently switches between pure electric power and hybrid mode as needed. The SUV boasts excellent noise insulation, making the 1.6-liter engine virtually silent unless pushed hard. The Santa Fe HEV isn't particularly fast, but it reaches the speed limit effortlessly and smoothly. The transmission is remarkably seamless. Hyundai claims a fuel consumption of 5.6L-100 km, 42 US MPG, on the combined cycle, and while we didn't quite achieve this figure, we easily managed around 6L-100 km, 39.2 US MPG, during extended drives. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.